Hi, it's William. Welcome to Flyspoke. And this fly I have in the vise here is inspired by Gary LaFontaine. And Gary believed that there was this moment when a caddis fly was emerging out of its shuck and basically was laying on the water trying to get rid of, uh, get rid of the shuck and could do nothing but squirm and uh, uh, have the wing popping out, its wings starting to pop out and the body opening up with this representing the shuck coming away and the fly was, the caddis was at its most vulnerable at that moment and this fly is actually made as a, this is a dry fly but it has no hackle. It's the, it's the form just prior to what you would call the adult where you might wind a hackle on this and have a thinner body after the caddis emerged out of its shuck. So this is that momentary, that momentary time in between. And um, I'm tying this fly with a Tiemco 206 BL. It's a barbless hook, up eye, very light wire, 2x short. Um, and I find that this extra large gap that this hook gives me uh, allows for this fly to, for its open body uh, to really be there and uh, not interfere with uh, the hook point. So I'm just starting with some sheer 14 aught olive color. Uh, you can do this fly in a number of different colorations. Uh, you can think of it as cream or tan, olive, green. Um, you can um, do it in brown tones, whatever the particular caddis is that you have in your area, that's where you want to target in coloration. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Antron. This is this uh, uh, Antron. You know, Gary sold his own uh, uh, um, sparkle yarn, he called it. And I'm just going to take a piece of it, and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take a toothbrush, and I'm just going to comb the comb the sparkle yarn to give it some separation. And I'm only going to use two strands for this now. And I'm tying on a piece on the top. tie on the other side on the bottom. I go to this side because the thread when I tie it should help carry it to the bottom for me. Okay. And I'm going to just simply trim this off. Keep the trim away from the front of the fly. And just neaten up. You don't have to be too particular about this, but just neaten it up. Now I have two strands. I have one running on the bottom, I have one on the top. Okay, just separate, separate that loop then. Okay, next I'm going to take a dubbing that is very cut, very short. This happens to be a METS product, um, AZSYN Peacock Bronze dubbing. And um, it's really spiky, and that's what you want this to be. And I'm going to put this on very loosely. I'm just kind of doing a uh, light light spin with it. I don't want to uh, fully spin this on. I'm making a very spiky underbody for this fly. I'm doing it all in olive, right? Um, imagine if it was a brighter green with the olive covering. I mean, there's, there's a number of different colorations that you can do with this. Then I want to take my two strands and here's where I'm going to create the the, the bubble, the ball, the, uh, the bubble. Antron's properties of holding air 
little air bubbles as it goes into the water when you make your cast are really substantial and uh, that's part of the property of the of the fly is that this is the the insect emerging and I make and I just push it back to form my bubble trying to make the hairs of the antron be pretty symmetrical around the hook and then when I, the bubble is formed I just wrap right in front of my fingers now it got torqued a little bit right so I just untorque it Got the uh, dubbing popping through a little bit. It's pretty, it's pretty haphazard. And I'll trim off the the antron. All right. There's my, there's the body made into the ball. And now I'm just going to go in, I'm going to cut a couple of the hairs away of the antron right in the front here and just pull them back. And I'm going to take them off the top. And basically this is the look of the shuck opening up. I don't want too many. Just enough so that you have a, a trailing amount there. Then I'm going to take some elk, very similar to a, a cat is dry fly, and I'm going to create the wing coming out. Maybe not as much or as big as the wing of an adult. And I put that right where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead in and I'm going to trim I'm going to trim that right to the length where I want it to be, where I envision it to be. Now this is really nice because if I just pull my thread in, it grips real, really well. That's what I like about the elk. All right. And the next thing is now I'm going to take a, a dubbing that is a little bit coarser. And this is just a it's just an olive olive color dubbing, but you can see the fibers on this are much longer. And I'm going to put that on to onto the thread, wind it in. And all I want to do is I want to put enough on to cover up the front. Gives it a really nice look to it. And then I want to make sure that I'm not going to clog up the eye of the hook. Got a little uh, from. I've been using uh, this little tube. Whenever I think I'm too close with stuff, I just put this right over the eye, like this. Pushes everything to the back, and right on that edge of the tube, I'll just run one or two wraps. It grabs everything. I take it off, and the eye is perfectly clean. It's a great little, uh, great little tip. That's just this little piece of tubing. And then the last thing I have to do here is I'll 
throw a whip finish on the front. Okay. Head cement on the thread if I wanted before I wrapped it. And I just take a toothpick, a couple of dabs in here, make sure the eye is clear. And uh, it's meant to be a little hairy and crazy because when these uh, insects are coming out of the water, they look uh, really disheveled and they are contorted and doing their best just to get, get out of that shuck and get free from the surface. Um, great little dry fly. There it is.